news flash. Not fake news. Say something There's about it, Pete. Pete. What do you think? It was great. All right, good. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Devil's in the system, guys. We need to stop and pray. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to The Brook on Canaan Radio episode, episode, if I can talk tonight, episode number nine in the season. We're excited to be together once again in the studio. David, Pastor Peter, Mrs. Reeves, Jewel, Courtney, Hope, and JT up in the booth. We want to hear from you during the show. You can text us at 920-940-8275 to request a song or to be a part of the final segment of the night, which is the third degree where you grill us with the hard questions. And you can send those to us throughout the uh, episode tonight. Make sure that you share this with a friend. Send them the link to YouTube, or they can go to listen.canonradio.com. Good to be together, guys. It's been a busy week. Yes, it has. Yes. 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 Busy week. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Put a, uh, I'm putting some metal on some of the roofs out there. Roofs? Roof? Roofs? Roofs? Reefs. Roofs. Roofs. Is it roofs? Roofs. Roofs. Roofs with the roofs. 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 Regardless, <laughs> putting some metal out on the roof out there, uh, on the lodge and on the bathhouse. So got uh, can. three shades darker between last week and this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, warm out there and bright. So yes, but it was good. It was Nobody good. fell off the roof. Not yet. Nobody fell off the roof. So a lot good. of screws did. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yes, that's true. Yep. Yeah, just a little bit more to button them up, and then those will be completed. They're already pretty much weather tight as it is, just some finishing touches on them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Great weather. Mm-hmm. Good weather. Yeah. yeah. It was sunny. It was kind of hot. Got some shades darker this week. Yeah. You're so <laughs> Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, I was like, okay. nobody yes, else is I jumping in. It. Yeah, it's fun. So nobody Where's fell off the roof, but some people did fall off of other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The bandwagon? Uh, <laughs> fell off the wagon. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> fell off. It wasn't, wow. wasn't a wagon. Uh, yeah. You should just tell the story. Tell the story. Get it, get it done and out of the way. Well, all right. Everybody look at the camera. Oh. There you go. Switch to password camera. Let's see it. There we go. It <laughs> this is what happens Beautiful. when you Take your meld off. Twitter with oh. real life. I'm what? sorry. No. I didn't mean to oh. hit him so you hard. See the other guy. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't do it. Wow. I did not Trace do it. Trace flinched. <laughs> yeah, flinched, Mrs. Reeves. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this week, my wife and I went out to the camp, and we were um, testing. Well, yeah, we set up the camper, and there's some things that we wanted to test out. So we stayed in the camper at the camp, and uh, I my four wheeler out there, and brought Reese out because you can't leave Reese at home. Mm. So of course Reese, my chocolate lab, he's seven years old, and believes he's still a puppy. <laughs> <sighs> Something wrong with that dog. Yeah. So I'm on my four wheeler, and every time I'm on my four wheeler, he always tries to. He's not good following. He just has to be a He ahead. wants to lead. He's truly a read. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he's running ahead, and I've got to be careful. And so this is a brand-new four-wheeler. It's got some real power, a little bit more than the last one. So I uh, was going down by the lake. Jewel was down there. Mom was down there, the girls. And uh, as I was going to see them, I hit Reese because he ran right in front of me. I hit him. And he just kind of bounced off and maybe bounced a foot in front of it. And I stopped, you know. And so I didn't run over him. But because he went in front of it mm-hmm. and he got hit, I thought, well, he's not hurt. No big deal. Maybe he learned. A pair. <laughs> so I took my two grandbaby, uh, grandbabies for. The one who took. <laughs> Every his phone just went off. Every episode before we start, he tells everybody, "Turn you mute your phones, mute your phones." And his phone he forgot. Off. He forgot. Back to your, back to your story. Who was it? That was me. No, like, who was no it? Way. <laughs> yeah, it was a group. Oh, I think it was Casey's. Uh, Casey's. Casey's. It was just a notification. Oh. Yeah. Did you order a pizza? Slice of pizza. No. Ooh. 
pizza. Yeah, it was Casey's. Oh, that's <laughs> great. New month, new offers. <laughs> Thanks. Brought new to you month. by Casey. The month, is, or the month is a week over. Wow, it's a little late for us. This has been my week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, you gave the grandbabies. Took, took my granddaughters for a ride, each one of them separate, and dropped them off. And everything's going good. And every time I'd leave, my wife would tell Reese to stay there, and he'd play in the water, and it was all good. So I dropped, uh, and then I took my wife for a ride, dropped her off, and then I took off, and I just assumed that the dog was going to stay there down by the lake and mm -hmm. play in the water. And so I thought, well, I'm by myself. I'm going to find out what this thing can do, you know. <laughs> and so, man, I took off and was coming up towards the well house. And there's a tree, there's a well house here, there's a tree here, another tree over here. I was going to go right between there. And I'm, I mean, I'm just right there at that opening. And all of a sudden, on the quarter of my eye on the left side, I see this brown Tootsie Roll <laughs> <laughs> That's literally like. shoot past me and go right in front of my four wheeler. And I mean, if I would have not, if I wouldn't have done what I did, We'd been burying Reese, and uh, I just cut off and into the tree, and I lost. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All I could say was, I'm picking myself up, rolling. I just it knocked me off. the The four wheeler got stuck in the tree, and it knocked me off on my back. And I'm a bum, but right on my back. And I rolled over, and I'm sitting there, and I can feel the blood dripping down. And I look up and I go, emotional damage. <laughs> you did not. Did you really? No. Uh, I, you know, I do what everybody does when something like happens. <laughs> did anybody <laughs> see me? Oh, like, oh, see. Was Reese, did, did Reese come anything? over? Yes, he so, was over oh, trying to oh, lick my face. And I said, get out of here, I'll kill you. <laughs> and uh, no, I didn't. I, did. I know, right? But um, I un untied un my four wheeler was untangled. stuck in, untangled the. Uh, the four wheeler and um, adjusted the handlebars and the brakes and got back on it and rode back down and uh, saw the girls and they were like, what ah, you do? What's going on? Covered in blood. Like, so, okay, Mimi's got to go take nothing your broken, <laughs> nothing broken, just uh, pride damaged a little bit and uh, big old black eye. Now I go into anywhere. I went. To, I went into Starbucks <laughs> and. It's so funny. We live in such a perverted generation where everybody talks about everything. They're not shy about anything. They color their hair purple, pierce everything they got, tattoo nasty stuff on their body, yeah. right? Nobody's afraid to talk about whatever they want to talk about. I go to the counter to order my drink, and the girl that's been waiting on me, I mean, she waits she on knows me. She, yeah. she knows yeah. me. And she looks up. She goes, hi, Pastor Bill, looks down, <laughs> looks back up, what can I get you? And looks back down at the ignore keyboard. It. Just ignore and, I mean, I'm sure she could have keyed it in without even looking. <laughs> and and she kept, I could tell she's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I said, notice anything? <laughs> Do you notice anything different? And, uh, I've been trying goes, a new I, I didn't want to say anything. I said, <laughs> this is me. I said, you can ask. So... <laughs> And then all day today, just kn I knocked on a couple doors and, and <laughs> it's, not I'm with your up. head. <laughs> but I, you know, I really uh, wanted to see. That's great. <laughs> People stop. They stay into the door, and I say, "I this past, I'm Pastor Reeves from North Platte Baptist Church. We have a big day tomorrow, Olympic Sunday." And they're just not hearing anything I'm saying. They're just looking at me, and. Uh, I said, I fell off a four wheel. I went, oh, did it hurt? <laughs> no. no. You put better off. Yo, this bus <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah. No, 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 no. And then uh, we, went, whatever, we went to the Chinese restaurant, and it's so funny. People are just like, I don't, I don't know what to say. These are times like these, you just. You just wear it proudly. <laughs> the only other time I think I've seen injury that bad was when David, I don't remember how old you were, but he was, we were doing construction and you were pushing trash down inside of one of the big containers that we had or dumpster, big yep. dumpster things. And mm -hmm. he slipped, fell down and, and just right on the edge, right on his yeah, eyebrow. And I remember that just like got huge yeah, it was, black eye. It was, that was that's exactly what his looked like. Yep. It totally oh, reminded me. Like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when David, when yeah, I was like phone. sticking out. But I was, so I wasn't as worried this time. I'm like, oh, 
You know, they didn't do anything. We went to the ER with David. <laughs> I stopped at the, um, the uh, what is that, the drugs, not the drugstore, what's that called? The pers- place to get the prescription, the pharmacy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. oh. Drive through. And I pulled in closest to the thing, and, and the lady gets on the phone, and she says, can I help you? And she's, I know she's just looking at me. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm here, pick, I have three prescriptions, uh, one for me and two for my wife. And she asked me uh, the name and the birth date, and I told her, and she, she just keeps looking at me. And of course, when she hangs up the phone, you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. But I, you just see, you know, she's thinking. So, so when she gets back, and she tells me the total, I said, "Hey, I said, you guys got any of those um, cold packs? You squeeze and break the." Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Yeah, yeah, you, you need one." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, I could probably use about four of them." So she went back and, and got two boxes and came back, and I said, uh, I "said Well, you're probably wondering." She goes, yeah. I said, I didn't want to come get the prescription. <laughs> <laughs> Did she laugh? Yeah, she mm. laughed. Uh, <laughs> Dad's always referring to Reese as your brother. Like he'll, he'll say, go go play with your brothers Like when, when David and I are there. And Dad has this phrase growing up. He'll always look at us, me and David, and be like, you guys are going to be the death of me. <laughs> just takes running through my mind as I think of Reeves. It's like he's he's a true Reeves son. He's gonna, yeah. be, the death. Death he's gonna be the death of his father. <laughs> well, I feel the same way. I couldn't run over you guys either. Yeah. So. Brother Crawford said, "Fess up." It was a deacons meeting, wasn't it? It was a deacons uh, meeting. <laughs> what deacons? Who are yeah. deacons? They're not around. They're anymore. not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, JT does, think, JT does think JT does think that basketball is a full contact sport, so you never know. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. you never know. Yeah. Actually, I got this today when I was playing that basketball thing. Yeah, the, that's right. Yeah, for tomorrow, yeah. for Olympic that's Sunday funny. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that thing's so small, you hit the backboard. It goes. It is. It is. It's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be, but it's still going to be fun. Yeah, it's still going to be fun. I think yeah, it's a good use the setup, but Pete could build a better backboard and. Yeah, we could have a, have a Peterbilt one that'll last until the yeah. Peter second Peter coming sons. of Christ. Yep. Impossible to move. Uh, <laughs> it only weighs 500 pounds. You know, a it's rim where it's possible pretty cheap it could bounce Amazon, off the rim so. into the hoop. Yeah, yeah, we could just make it where there's no rim and you just have to throw the ball. So and if it falls yeah. back, then you win. There's going to be a lot of fun little games tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, Olympic Sunday at the church. And uh, it's going to be We're having fun. extra Axe throwing, that's right. Mm-hmm. Not real axes. <laughs> yeah, tell the tell, no, tell no, Mr. No. Yeah, every tell time I mentioned story. that today at the door, yeah, it was like, <laughs> they're plastic. Yes. <laughs> Courtney had one of those, the older lady was telling her. She like, was quite concerned. We're going to have all the fire. Oh, because you said. Up. She was reading the flyer while I was oh. explaining to her. And then I said, their kids are for, the games are for the kids. And she's like, oh. The axe throwing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, just a, yes. Just a plastic one. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, no, we have a professional, and they stand against the board. <laughs> <laughs> and they spin it. Yeah, they they spin up Ooh. around. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to a song. Let's do that. Anyone else got anything else to add? No. All right. We're going to go to a song. Don't forget, you can text us, 920-940-8275. Uh, don't forget to be thinking of questions for the final segment, The Third Degree. And we're going to go to a very fitting song, Glory Bound Quartet singing, I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. This is episode nine, Thicker Than Water. Topic we want to talk about in light of growing up IFB. Talking about the relationships in families, siblings, and uh, parents. Um, you know, the old phrase is, blood is thicker than, than uh, water. Has to do with the relationships and loyalties within the family. And... Uh, you know, the Bible says, of course, you know, the old story of Cain and Abel. And God came, came to Cain and wanted to know where Abel was at. I always thought that was funny. Like God didn't know. <laughs> and it says in verse 9, it says, uh, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And uh, 
Now, of course, I'm not God, but if one of my sons would have said that to me, I would have slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I put you in charge, knucklehead. You're older. There's a lot of things inferred through that, you know. Uh, you, you see a pecking order where the older one would be somewhat responsible to give an account for where his younger siblings were at. So that kind of took the tone in our family. And uh, it's not like it was brand new when I read the Bible. It just uh, I'm second oldest of eight kids, so I myself knew that uh, the older you are, the more blame you get. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And uh, I, I came from a very large family of eight children. And uh, even though it was splintered and, you know, divided up through the years and uh, different families, and um, I still developed relationships inside of that family with my brothers and sisters. And they were very... Um, I would say surface, when you look at relationships in general today, uh, surface more like friendships than a relationship of a brother or a sister. Um, I, I think where I keep that relationship with my siblings would be simply because I um, am uh, fam we're family. And so there's a tie there. That's that blood that's thicker than water. Mm -hmm. It's just something that clicks in your head that says I have a, a bigger responsibility to um, to them than I do just the average person on the street or someone that uh, is engaged with a friendship with me or something like that. Um, but the, the Bible talks about in Proverbs 17, 17, that the brother is born for adversity. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was interesting uh, because as the kids grew up, I could see that uh, there were times where they were definitely in adversity to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that, that the way that verse uh, reads out or plays out is uh, more than anything speaks of the toughness of these relationships, um, that they can endure things that the average relationships that are not in, within a family would not and could not or should not endure. And we are called to a higher standard within our family to look past each other's shortcomings because of that blood. And, um, and so... Um, I know my wife, uh, six kids in her family, and she's second oldest in her family. And then uh, Pete over there has got how many kids in your? There's six of us. Six. Your second oldest? Third. Third oldest. Uh, so his uh, um, experience with siblings, and you're, you're the baby of the family? Three of four. Three? You're the third? I'm the third. Of, the, of four. four. Okay, so almost the baby. It's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> three of three, yes. Third child. But yeah. Courtney has maintained good relationship with her siblings, and Pete's got a good relationship with his siblings. I would say that on the outside viewing Pete's family, uh, sometimes it looks different than what our family looks like, and probably just simply because your dynamic was different being on the mission field all those years. And then your older brother, um, how many siblings left? Three, did they all, didn't your brother come to the States before you? Well, two of them did. Two of them did, yeah. So, um, and they kind of went different directions, right? One went in the military. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so true. Stephen, the oldest, yeah. went to college. Right. Matthew, yeah. about a year after that, went back, but... For work, he started going That's to right. the Bible That's Institute. Right. That was at independent. Um, and then about six months after Matt went back, I went back right. to the same place that he was in. And then my youngest brother, after but you didn't stay there. You no, ended up going to a West Coast. Yes. Right. Yeah. My youngest brother went into the Army Reserve. Right. Okay. So a little bit of going different places and mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So. Um, I guess I'll just ask a question and see where it goes from there. You can answer it however you feel. Uh, what are some of the things that have kept you all on the same page? I guess this is really more to my four kids. Wow, that's great. <laughs> I will answer. That's actually accurate. <laughs> Um, 
I would think, I would say our parents being on the same page kept us on the same page, first and foremost, um, constantly pointing us to the Lord, reminding us if we chose differently, what that would look like as a family, what that would do to our family. Um, I think too, just seeing the broken family that you did, that you have um, with your siblings and your family, and you were always really big at being honest and open about how hard that was for you, even as a kid. <clears throat> and so I think that just keeps you feeling blessed and grateful for what you have, even, even during the hard times, because it's nowhere near some of the things you went through. And then on mom's side of the family, just watching how different choices you make as an adult um, affects the relationship within a family spiritually um so for me that was one of the biggest things is just you guys being open and willing to discuss the hard things that i think a lot of family out there wants to protect their kids from so they don't talk about it um, they want them to have respect and love for the extended family members and that's not necessarily wrong but when you don't address the blatant sin or uh, things that are happening within the family that go against the Lord, um, you risk passing that on. So for me, I think it was that. That's always kept our focus, even during the times when I had my own choices to make. I had to weigh very heavily what this was going to do with my relationship with every member of my family down the road. We did have a different, different dynamic, I think. A lot of people um, don't understand because of where God, how God moved me um, in the direction of our, my path. You guys didn't have a choice. You came along with me. <laughs> so you really didn't spend much time in a big area with many different opportunities to have friends or mm -hmm. anything like that. So you learned to um, find friendships or create that relationship within the brother and sister mm -hmm. world. And I guess in that whole, whole setup, you know, you might have struggled with, we talked, I think, on another show about this, struggling on getting, uh, having good friends and not being, not feel, feeling like you never had any friends or something like that. But um, I, I remember so often you guys, uh, hours and hours playing together whether oh, yeah. you know it glues anybody remember those <laughs> every winter nice. yeah weeks at a time spent out in the bitter cold <laughs> building i just well, mentioned not to, for a week but mentioned to kate today we were driving down the road and we saw some kids out we we're going to stop and talk to them they were playing in the water you know, because it's nice and warm now. And I told Kay, I said, man, so I have so many memories of yeah. going to mom and dad and be like, can we go outside and play in the water? And just get one of the <laughs> hoses from the well and just make an absolute mess of the dirt and sand that's out there. What creates that? I mean, I, I guess I've never really stopped to think about it all that much. But, you know, I know when I was growing up, <clears throat> I always wanted to do things separate from my brothers and sisters. Like mm -hmm. I wanted my mom and dad, we to, uh, totally different life, but I wanted my mom and dad to... Um, take me and drop me off at the mall let me go to the movies or you know let me go hang out with my friends um obviously that's a totally different world yeah uh, for you guys i don't, i just feel like i had a different thirst i did not look for where you guys had each other mm -hmm. um, well i think i don't know from the way i look at it you fed a part of us that enjoyed working together not, I mean, even when we were playing or play fighting, it was always, sometimes it was three against one, sometimes it was two against one. So there was always that feeling of strategizing. And when you know somebody, like your sibling as well as you do, um, you enjoy that because it, it challenges you. Um, but I think, I think part of it is because you were also like that. So you would come out and play with us. Not that you were out there all the time with us, but... For quite a majority, especially in our younger years, I, th I feel like it was fostered because I remember waiting for you to get home from work. I was just so, could not, mom was boring, okay? <laughs> mom was so boring. She watched yes, the I boring was. news. I had to work. And she would <laughs> yell at the news. And I just thought it was so boring. 
I just well. remember Will and I would wait when we were young. I remember, you know, Ohio and Georgia and just wait. You beating could, me up. Could not wait till you got home because that's when the fun began and we would just do stuff together. So I think it fostered a spirit of enjoying, genuinely enjoying being around I each other. I think almost we didn't know what we were doing. We were just, <laughs> no, I, sometimes I feel like because we lived, there's something to living for God. Mm -hmm. Not that we're perfect or more holy than anybody else, but when you want to live a righteous life, you begin to look around at your children and realize that if you don't engage with them, they're going to find places to engage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I felt like, this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of losing everything that I had from not paying attention to it or holding it accountable. And I know there's a lot of criticism that comes from that, and I know it's a lot of pressure even built through the years. I would feel from you guys, not not anything outside the norm, I would expect it. But um, you know, I constantly have said this, I think, through this whole program, this, but you know, the Bible says, a child to left to himself bringing his mother to shame. So mm -hmm. I just purposed never to we couldn't not hide. know what you were doing or yeah. not know where you're at. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And I felt like instead of being the overbearing nag, let me be engaged. Mm -hmm. And so I could know where you're at if I'm with you. Yeah. So if we're, you know. I think that and the lack of easy access to technology. technology yeah, um, I think that's at a least big thing. for useless purposes we didn't do video games unless except it was a family thing and except for maybe david because he was the baby no uh, computer there's a, uh, there's a bible, computer there's a bible principle different. there <laughs> uh there's a time and a purpose ecclesiastic for everything mm -hmm. the son. and so we believe that too try you know it's funny these bible verses come out and i know the the subject matter when you look at it doctrinally looking at it people hate it when you do this and pull out a practical truth and then apply it to your life but that's actually what God written, wrote His Bible for. Mm -hmm. You read this, and we didn't live. We didn't live uh, in the day of Ecclesiastes, but the principles are are there. And so, mm -hmm. if you take that principle and you engage in in your life today, then the same fruit comes from it. Right. And I feel like. We just knew that you couldn't always be in the uh, watching the TV or on the video games or talk, talking to your friends down the street if you had any or let you lose. We couldn't let you lose to not know where you're at, you know. So, I remember the first time I went to a friend's house and they had their own TV in their room. I think I was like, uh, mm -hmm. it was in Georgia, so mm -hmm. I don't know how old it was, eight or nine, mm, six, younger. No, was, no, no, no. Let's see, five, six, seven. I was like Seven third eight. grade. It's supposed to be third. I would say that's yeah, true. Yeah, eight. It's eight or nine. So when I went to their house, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, what? You have your own TV? Yeah, watch whatever I want. Mm. And their parents were just genuine, like generally not around to babysit <laughs> at all. Um, and it was the tea. But then there were other families, like the tea gardens house, where it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. And so I obviously knew there was a difference in engaged parents not, maybe not have like fully understood the difference, but. I think it would be all agree at the table here that Buddy and David would be friends more than Hope, or you know, and Hope and Jewel, you know, the girls and the guys. Mm -hmm. But it's not like you had a choice on whether or not you could like each other. True. <laughs> you know, that it wasn't like going to school, this your you know, going mm -hmm. to third grade and you're thinking, Oh, I'm gonna who am I gonna like? Who's gonna be my mm -hmm. friend? Mm -hmm. It's like I I feel like trust getting you guys to understand that you your relationships for life. Friendships not they don't cycle mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. So many times, you know, you got married to him and how many friends did you leave behind? So that's reality. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at this this core, this core of family, you're talking about a lifelong forever thing. And how do you keep it healthy through the years? But by teaching everybody in here that you better learn to like each other. You better mm -hmm. learn because really that does condition, condition you to become a better Christian anyway because there's so many people that are unlikable 
that God wants us to like and to love. So I, I think if you guys met and you weren't family, would you choose to be friends? Do you think you even like each other? That's a good question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. For, for maybe a week, <laughs> and then you get mad at each well, other. I, I think there's a lot of families, and I think I said this to you when we were talking about it, that have grown up in similar circumstances as far as not having a lot of outside friends, close friendships, whether on the mission field or there's a lot of families. I mean, I feel like even though I went to a big Christian school when I was growing up, because we lived far away from that school and didn't go to the same church as most of those kids, we still, you know, when I was growing up, we were, I would say, a close-knit family. But what is unusual is, or is a little more unusual, is to carry that closeness into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And obviously that couldn't happen um, probably as good as it's happened because of geography. In other words, we all mm -hmm. live in the same area. But like Hope said, the most important thing is serving the Lord, living for the Lord together. But, but there are some things I think that did set them up for this. But you know, there again, it's not just the fact that you didn't have choices because as soon as you get older, you have choices everywhere. So I wonder. I wonder. You know, thinking about your dad and the kind of man he is. Thinking about your dad and the kind of man he is, uh, both being in the ministry. I feel like um, as I looked around fundamentalism and I looked at different men that were fathers and leading their families, everything was great when the kids were young. But when they got to 18 and they looked at Bible college or they looked at going off away and they start going off, that's when you really begin to see things, you know, those kids making really startling decisions mm -hmm. that spoke contrary completely to what their parents. So I feel like we've been very fortunate, blessed, if you will, to as you got older, you chose to stay IFB, you chose to stay mm -hmm. going after the things of God and building your life and keeping your standards. And I can't help but think that the, I, I'm trying, I keep, I always do this, I, I'm not being critical of your dad or your, your dad, <laughs> but I try to think why is that different what what did i do different mm -hmm. that made that happen I, and i only thing that comes to mind is i did not feel it robbery to say to my family you are my family god gave you to me mm -hmm. and this is the direction we'll go i i didn't feel it's robbery because god's going to hold me responsible and it feels robbery because joshua said as for me and my house mm -hmm. we will so I feel like early in your childhood, I always wanted to make us a team. So if we were ever going to continue to go, even if you went off to a mission field or you went a different way, I felt like we would have to do it as a team. Mm -hmm. If I was the pastor and you want to go off and start a church, I would hope that we could do it as a team. Right, I hope supportive. I would, yeah, I, you know. Get to be a part not of that it. You, not that you left mad. Mm -hmm. is you, I can't right. work for you on staff. Right. And, and you take your wife and kid and go, and, and then we do our best to have an uh, open, kind relationship, but yet hurt. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, and that brings, brings me to one of my points here, is I feel like in this brother's keeper thing, what, when you feel the responsibility that you do have to keep your brother, I think there's three things here that we see happen all the time one is we have to work through conflict mm -hmm. you don't have a choice you have to work through it mm -hmm. um, you know with friendships so often you can just decide not to work through it or somebody's mad or so you just give up the friendship and say I was right and they're wrong that doesn't happen in a household mm -hmm. that doesn't happen between siblings it didn't happen in a room where you're sharing you know you have to work through it. Somebody has mm -hmm. to admit they're right or wrong, or you both have to agree, and forgiveness is involved, all those kind of things. And that brings me to the second one. You've got to be willing to forgive. So it actually puts you in a place where, I hate to say this, but you don't have a choice but to get over it, mm -hmm. to forgive. And we don't, we don't actually have to do that with mm -hmm. our friends. Right. Nobody, can, nobody makes us do that. And uh, I feel like, you know, you guys had to, sharing those rooms when you were young, 
made you have to forgive each other um, it was probably good for you and also help you work through your conflicts you know you're wearing my stuff don't wear my stuff uh, that's my my toy or whatever you know um, and then it also produced wisdom in knowing what to address and what to let go so sometimes you could be in your room and something happens and you're sitting there thinking, I want to punch his lights out. <laughs> but do I think, should I do? And I mean, it just feels like you really cult get the chance to cultivate and work the wisdom that you've been taught in the Bible mm -hmm. and you've read in Proverbs. What do you think? I would agree with Pass. that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, what I was thinking as you're talking about that is, um, I know you posed the first question about, you know, what has, I guess, kept us together going the same direction. And it's been we're talking a little bit about, you know, having a father figure that that takes his family, leading his family um, seriously and has his responsibility to do. I think that's important. Um, working together, playing together. Um, I think Patch the Pirate, you know, mm -hmm. um, while we were talking about that, I was reminded of, I think it's Custard's Last Stand. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's, it's, yeah, the one on family. Yeah, basically. it's one on family and where mm -hmm. they, they, I think there's a song or something. I don't even remember, but it's something about they, they hit home constantly. The family that works together stays, stays together, together or plays, plays together, together stays together. Yeah. Things like that. I think those are, those are a big factor too. But the first thing that went to my mind when you said that is, I think, keeping God's word prominent yeah. oh. <clears throat> because there are a lot Why of you families. Get spiritual for? <laughs> no, I think we, we may have said it here and there in our conversation but um it's almost it's almost a spiritual paradox to a certain extent because what you did is you put forth the word of god and the principles of god and god himself more prominent than the family right which reminds me of luke fourteen twenty six. if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life he cannot be my disciple you were constantly putting in front of us we're not just sticking together because this is what I want to do. You know, we're not just working and playing together just to be family. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, when you have your own choice, that's not, that's not going to be thick enough. You know, that's not going to really matter. But what you did is you said, God's important. Mm -hmm. God's principles are important. And that's what I think a lot of these families that end up dismantling spiritually over time, I think a result, it's a result of the Bible not being the prominent figure in the home. Mm -hmm. It's, let's just be a family. Let's, because I know you said um, the father and mother are on the same page. That has helped a lot. But I could think of families right now that their kids are all over the place, but mom and dad are still doing right. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, I, I think it's, you said, biblical principles, the Bible, God's word, truth, trumps family. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I said it's a spiritual paradox, because mm -hmm. you hate your family. And when you do that, you put God first, it only draws your family closer together because everybody's drawing closer to God, which in turn brings everyone closer. And so I think, and, and also when you're talking about you have to deal with things with one another, you know, that all stems from a spiritual responsibility that you have with your relationship with God. That's true. You know, if you, nothing's, nothing is going to provoke you to get right with your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, except for God at the end of the day. Or you just leave. You just go your own way. But when God's first and your relationship with him is first, ultimately, you will go to your brother or sister. Even, even if you have ought with one another, you will ultimately say, I'm going to do the best I can to take personal responsibility, what I have. And that's all a result of keeping God first. So a drive to please God, mm -hmm. but also a commitment to each other not to let each other out of fixing those problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wrote a couple of things down, and you hit a couple of them, but I just in my head with that question, what, what has kept us all on the same page? And you kind of hit what I was going to talk about as far as when it comes to leadership, because that is so important. Um, but what is keeping us together now that we're out from underneath yeah. the roof? Right. Now from under, roof. Uh, underneath, <laughs> you know, where the peanut butter is good. It's the bigger roof. Um, Ah, true. Where where now we're buying great value instead of getting Jeff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what is keeping us together? And I think you know we have the same leadership. Is the it's first not thing. the paycheck? No. Okay. The same, God knows I do it's appreciate not that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not complaining. Um, <clears throat> no, a bit a bit of honesty. I mean, the, um, you guys aren't getting rich. No, by but, working for the Lord. But God takes care of us. Yes, He yes. does. Mm -hmm. But I just thought right. I'd throw that out there. 
So the same leadership, I think, is a big part of it. It's what we all we all grew up with the same dad. I mean, that sounds like no duh, but he handled. We we all know how dad handles things, mm-hmm. and when we all are on the same page because our leadership is steadfast, then it makes those decisions easier to do. You got to think about think about when you're in a classroom, you know, and there's rules set up. The kids all know what to expect, even though all the kids are different. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows what the rule is and I feel like that's one of the reasons why you know even to this day we can all somewhat get along um, and then <laughs> the, the second thing I was going to say is not only we have the same leadership we have the same beliefs kind of what you talked about we have the same same doctrine we, we were taught from God's word what, what truth was and uh, we picked, had to pick that up for ourselves now that we're out of out from you know underneath you and all in our own lives we can be perceived on the outside as looking like, I think it's funny that they'll look at us and say, you guys are a cult. No, we're just all, but we all believe the same. We have the same beliefs. <laughs> and because we have the same beliefs, we have the same goals. That's good. You know, when we have the same goals, we're all going the same direction. We're all headed the same way. And it makes it easier if you think about, um, you know, can two dwell together except to be agreed, you know? So I'm not saying that we all are perfectly agree with each other all the time uh, we're Reeves um, but I think because we all have the same you know we have the same leadership have the same leadership and are willing to submit to that because we have the same uh, beliefs and because we have the same goals uh, I think that has made us stronger then the one other thing I wanted to say is we've all had we've had the same experiences um, have you ever heard the phrase uh, hard times make strong men mm-hmm. ever heard that yeah yeah, yeah. Our family has gone through a lot, and we did it as a family, right. you know, and being able to go through those difficult times as a family, you come out the other side with a strength that wouldn't be there if the hard time wasn't there. Yeah. And I think there's a big aspect to that that a lot of families miss out on, not, not, because, not because there's anything wrong with a parent wanting to provide better for their kids, but because they're not willing to take the steps to put themselves... Mm in a position where their service to the Lord may, sacrifice, may, right? may put them in a position where they're going to have hard, have hard times. And showing their kids, this is, these are hard, you know, I this think, is hard, but we're going to go through it. I think our hard times were interesting because um, when they visited the Reeves family, they visited the whole family. Mm-hmm. And it was fun. it's funny because, like, uh, when I get all this, yeah. was, uh, uh, Ellery and Anna, they're like, oh, Papa, oh, poor Papa. You know, they come mm-hmm. over and pat me on the head, you know. <laughs> You're like, no, don't do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're showing me mercy and what we call that just kindness and love and all that. And they're feeling bad for me. I feel like our problems were, were different because it was like it visited our whole family. So all of us got bruised in a way. Mm-hmm. And I would come back feeling bad for if I created the problem or the problem was just in our family and everybody was suffering, I'd be feeling bad for you guys where you guys were feeling bad for me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what really got us glued together because we all took it as ours together. Mm -hmm. Um, You said something earlier. I thought I'd just ask you a question. Do you think that family means... I, I don't think you do. So this is kind of a, we call that a facetious no. question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you think most people you think You want that, him to comment on it, yes. Do you think that most people think that family means we all always get along? Because <laughs> I, I think a lot of times in the world, that's what people think. When we say, well, we had a great family. Like, we never argue. Or and thought, we yeah. never disagree. And we never have our own preferences and go different ways. I feel like, there's a lot of disagreement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I was kind of asking yeah. him, but I don't know if you wanted to answer that. I'm one of those people who likes a second to think about his answer. Oh, so okay. go for so it, Hope. Go ahead, Hope. <laughs> she doesn't second. need a minute. Sure. <laughs> I jump right in, Hope. I Actually, just to your point that most people think when they're on the outside looking in at our family, and because we are positive, I feel like for the most part positive about the way we grew up. I wouldn't say we're positive. No, I said we're kidding. positive I'm about joking. growing up by the way we grew yeah, up. Right. <laughs> um, I actually had a conversation <laughs> with Mia the other day, a couple Saturdays ago. Um, she was just really struggling with some family stuff, and she opened up and told me that she was having these struggles. And and I was like, yeah, yeah, sounds about like me and Brother Will <laughs> all the time growing up. She's like, what? I thought you guys, like, 
never fought. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was, so I do think to some extent when you are grateful for what you have and you are talking positively about it, some people who maybe are going through a lot, like mm-hmm. Mia comes is in a blended family. Right. And mm-hmm. so she's struggling with where her place is at in her family and what that's supposed to look like and when to lead, when not to lead, all the same things every kid goes through, um, but maybe on a little bit of a bigger emotional scale because it's all new. Blended, blended families are really difficult because they're usually blended because they, they have br- the, the normal family failed mm-hmm. and they broke down divorce, separations, things like that. And that carries a scar. It yeah. carries a weight. Mm-hmm. Even the innocent carry that. And that's why I say to parents all the time, marriage is for life. Yeah. One man, one woman for life. And, yeah. and it's a sober decision when you're dating. Don't make it fast mm-hmm. because, the, you know, you, you may think, well, I don't like it here, so we're going to change the geography, where we're going to go or where we're going to live or who we're going to work with. But you take yourself with you. Yep. And so if you can't learn to really plug in and, and mm-hmm. you're in a blended family is hard because you got a you get marry a woman who's got a son and you're a man and you got two daughters and trying to get them at 15 16 17 to years of age each other. <laughs> yeah and then oh let's go to church and see if that works mm-hmm. now you're using christ as a as a rabbit's foot in church and <clears throat> christianity really hoping that somehow a miracle will happen mm-hmm. so i would say to the IFB guys and girls that are in relationships or just got married, you're blessed because you're still maintaining that opportunity to live within the promise mm-hmm. underneath the umbrella of what God created as a family, a unit. So be committed in that relationship because if you ever step outside of it, mm-hmm you can never get back to it. Right. And that includes what it does to your children. So, you know, it's a heavy and responsibility. And a lot of those things are things I shared with Mia, just telling her, I know it seems like your family is so different when you look at your family versus my family, but we all go through a lot of the same things and we have to make a lot of the same decisions and that is to be committed to one, yeah. one another. I think she needs to, I think anybody in a blended relationship or a blended family, especially the kids, they need to, this is what I would tell them. You may not have what we have and what we have maintained through these years, but you can have it someday. Yep. So mm-hmm. you just have to wait longer and you have to be determined, I'm not going to do it the way my parents did it. Mm-hmm. Even let it be more motivation to work on yourself. one man, one woman for a lifetime yeah. because yep. that affects everybody. I have had a moment to think. Okay. <laughs> Preach it. <clears throat> I think it's interesting. Um, Honestly, if you look at the scope of the conversation that we're having right now and the fact that it seems so like we're standing on the outside looking in trying to explain it, Mm -hmm. when in reality, historically, this is exactly what families are supposed to be. You think about all the way back into Bible times, how how did nations become nations? Mm -hmm. It wasn't because families took off to different places is because they stayed together because they they understood what it meant to you know live well, in the same town Jacob, and, Jacob and all his children <clears throat> and actually right. Noah built the ark with but his family. being being a family that is as the world calls it today nuclear mm-hmm. um, and having having that uh, organization from the leadership but then building a family that wants to be together this should not be weird yeah. This should not be odd. They're, they're, the world's trying to make it weird. Well, I think it's so rare now that it is. It's weird. not even they the actually, world. They call it conditioning. It's well, well I'm, I'm saying just just the fact that a family a family like this exists. I, and to be honest, I'm going to say even in IFB, mm-hmm. finding finding families that um, work together uh, without work together, stay together, that are part of the same ministry. Um, and that have the same focus, the same goals, that aren't looking to try and find a way to go off and do something else, but are truly passionate about where God has put them and understand how strong we are together as a family to be able to accomplish what God God would have us to do. Uh, but specifically in answering your question, I think of there, there are many families, I feel like, um, that are perhaps in church or serving the Lord, maybe not completely together, but you know, they're serving the Lord. What makes it different from what we have? 
I feel like that there is a real inability for my generation underneath the leadership to be willing to continue to be a part of that nuclear family. Mm -hmm. So where the son feels like, um, I have my own family now, I'm going to go do my own thing. Instead of it being, there is, there is a uh, symbiotic relationship right now between myself and my father and my father and my children. And not that I'm going to say, Dad, will you parent my children? Right, mm -hmm. I understand. But that I will have the ability to say, I'm not going to, for the sake of my pride and who I think my family needs to be, remove myself from what God has put me into um, to to defraud my children of the influence that I had growing up. And you're also by, trying to create for your children something you did not have. And that's a right. gran grandfather relationship. While, while at the same time exhibiting the same strength and leadership and direction that was given in my life mm -hmm. without acquiescing to uh, whatever you think. Does that, does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a real juggling. It's even more it's a complex as you right. get older. Right. And so I think, I think there's some of that that's missing. And I think it's missing on two parts. It's missing on the part of the son being willing to be put himself in that relationship. But it's also missing on the side of, I can think, think of, Dad, you're just, you're the kind of person who'll just tell me. You'll be like, you, you'll, 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 you'll talk about things like that. And I think we have a lot of fathers that think that, all right, they're out of the house, my job's done. And how many times do you say that? You say, my kids are out of my house, but my job ain't over. Yeah, right. You take that job, that position seriously because you are still our father. Well, we may not live in your house, but that, and, and, and obviously, I referred back to the sermon you preached a long time ago, control versus influence. And as you get older, the influence morphs and changes and adjusts. Mm -hmm. But being willing, uh, both on our end and on your end, to learn and to, to continue through the struggles because it's all brand new. You know, it's like, um, you know, I think when Kay and I first got married, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So why would I be hard on her or hard on myself? Why would I be, why would either of us be mad at each other? We're, we're not experienced in this. We've never done it before. <laughs> okay. We're going to make mistakes. So it's like looking at relationships that way. I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of unforgiveness, which mm -hmm. you had talked about earlier, the ability for, uh, for. Uh, fathers to forgive the children or children forgive the fathers both directions as kids grow up if that's not there you end up with kids that are bitter at their parents and parents who think you just don't want, want or me around. siblings that can't seem to get along either or siblings that in can't get along. Yeah. i was just gonna say i didn't want to take away from the topic but i feel like it came back around you asked uh, would any of us choose to be friends like if we weren't related would we and we met up would we choose to be friends i think our initial response was no, because we know everything there is to know about each other. But I actually think it would be yes, mm -hmm. because biblically and doctrinally and mm -hmm. passion and I think because we Lord, have the same beliefs and, and we have the, direction. Yeah. yeah, I absolutely think that we would. We would find Probably strong would friendships with each other. Be less frustration because you wouldn't have the brother sister. The familiarity wouldn't Fam be there. They, right. Well, I think so what happens is we could also get into the state of mind. <laughs> They did that to me on purpose because right. yes. they knew they could get away with it. Yes. Right. We're related by and blood. Be and what are you going to do? Yeah. I think that it's that was leading me to. <laughs> it does. But see, I think this dynamic I'm is important. Yeah. And this is what keeps right. us going ahead because I look at Bob Gray Sr. and his family, mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of paranoia destroyed that family. And that's one thing I told you guys as being someone who maybe will step down someday and be pastored. Mm -hmm. Uh, by one of my sons learning to sit in the fellowship chair is going to be hard, and I have to practice that right now. And I notice I'm noticing you're both married, and it's getting it's not getting easier. It's getting harder because time is going on, and I don't want it to go on. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm in charge. Wait a minute, I'm in charge, <laughs> and you guys are going not for long. No, you're not. But I'm just saying. But I'm saying that. Okay, so you have your family, and you have your family, and you have your family. Um, you're the leaders of your, your kingdom, per se. Yes, I will say what needs to be said, and sometimes I, but there's, there are a lot of times I don't, right, hon? Right. We'll talk about it at home, but I, I, I purposely don't. And one of the difficult things for me is I know what happened inside the Gray family. It's like when dad says it, the reason he thinks this about me and the reason he thinks this about me is all, it's, it's like a dart. It's like, and then 
you are the leader of your home and your family, and that's not the way you see it. So it almost comes. Re- how do you? How? I feel like it's. This is what we're juggling. Mm-hmm. Working together and not resenting each other. Mm-hmm. That's the hard and tr- and, and let, letting go of paranoia. I think maintaining I, a, right. a trust. And I that, think that the, the flip side of what you were just speaking to. There's you know you said, you know you say a lot, but there's a lot you don't say. I think the flip side to that on our end is. There's a lot that you may not say to us, but there's a lot that we've been taught that we may see, regardless of if you say it or not. And that trust, as we get older, that trust is so, so important. And I found that it's what has bettered our relationship. When you've stood back and been like, all right, go ahead, make your mistakes. And either you make the mistakes or the training that was instilled in us comes back. Yeah. Exactly what God says. Train up a child the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. And being able to... St- to stand back and even though you want to say it you want to tell us you want to be like uh, and we make the right decision or make the wrong one and learn we um, live in a society when parents do so much for their kids to make their life easier mm-hmm. and that struggle has never been there for me when you were kids it is more there now for me and i don't know about mom but for me i, I guess it is in, in this it, it manifests itself as being grandma wanting to let the kids do you know the grandkids do mm-hmm. whatever and i'm like no, you know, I'm more, but w- with my family, my two boys and my two daughters, I love them. They're my world. And I, if God will allow us to continue to work in the ministry together, I don't want that. I don't want to mess that up. So it's a constant just um, trying to decide where I step in, where I, I step out and I, I trust and, you know, trying to, uh, the, the thing is, is we have. I, I, I rather make mistakes than trying to do something. In other words, if I got in your, you're the newest married one. So if I got in your business because I saw something, and I ripped you, corrected you, and it had to do with your family, and I went too far. I would rather try to fix that relationship. And have you engage me and let's fix that, but then to not say anything and watch you just go off a totally different direction. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I also have this other side of me who watches you and goes, Well, I don't want to say anything too fast because maybe that ship will correct itself. That course will, you'll correct it, you'll see it, and you'll correct it. You know, so. I just feel like the family is just the most difficult thing that I've ever led. It's more difficult than the fundamental independent Baptist mm-hmm. church. Well, it goes back to that verse, brothers born for adversity. I think everybody has to be willing to go through that diversity. Or not diversity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's what I'm saying, bro. Someone's been watching some woke news. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of diversity at this table. It's good. <laughs> But I just think it's it's something that I you know I just I literally just mentioned what you just said pretty much to court on the way over here, because we were talking a little bit about maybe some of the areas where our families have maybe maybe we have a little bit of errors in or mm-hmm. maybe a little bit too far in one direction or the other direction. We were talking about our family is very passionate and very like from the outside everybody would say the Reeves. They are together. They are going the same direction. But if you were inside, I mean, you'd think we all hate each other to death. <laughs> <laughs> At times. Yeah. <laughs> More times than not. Yeah. <clears throat> but we were talking about some of that is because of we're just passionate people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to some extent, I think growing up, I think if we would look at some of the areas that we probably could have done better and we could do better mm-hmm. in, in our personal relationships with one another about being maybe a little bit overly I don't know, argumentative or, you know, prodding or provoking each other for stupid things like that, rather than in some, in some respect, treating each other as, you know, not just as brothers and sisters, but as decent human beings, you know, because we have that blood relation, we're a lot more likely just to, yeah, communication deteriorates quickly. Yes. And so, but we were talking a little bit about that. And, but I said, you know, you have to be careful not to overcorrect because I would rather have, Mm -hmm. I would rather have, you know, that willingness to make mistakes, like you just said, to communicate, to, to engage. passionately right. engage, to say things you probably probably shouldn't say, coming from a heart of desiring to do better or desiring the other person to do better, to do better holding each other accountable, mm-hmm. than 
to say nothing and let everybody just drift off in their own directions and and live under this false pretense of unity when really i i feel like that's really a key thing because i know uh, personally when i look back at my family growing up um you know, I feel like we were all on the same page until we got to a certain age, going off to college. And then as one by one, people started making choices that went against, you know, what we had been taught, what was in the Bible, living for the Lord, ministry, all those, all those things that helps keep us, what, what Will said, keep us on the same page. But as people started to drift a little bit here, a little bit there, or even big steps, it was that sense of, like, you don't say anything like or if you do say something you're going to push them away further and it was that constant um fear of engaging because i'm going to make it worse mm -hmm. when i think what dad just said a lot of times um, i feel like his his boldness and his willingness to say like you said with that verse hate your brother your father your mother obviously we know that doesn't mean hate them but it means you're willing to lose them mm -hmm. because you love the lord and i think there was a whole movement built around like the gother family stuff and i don't know a whole lot about it is it goth gaither no. gother no, gother, gother. <laughs> i don't know a whole lot about it but but i do get the sense that they emphasized the family so they're focused so much on the family and i think what you said david about being focused on the lord and then with that boldness Dad taking responsibility, and each one of you having your families now, but still being willing to brother to mm -hmm. brother, sister to brother, sister to say. sister, that I am my brother's keeper, and I'm willing to step up and say something. And it's not easy. Courtney and I just had a conversation in the car t today. I forget what we were talking about. We were talking about how conflict is sometimes difficult. Not conflict. Confront, um, confrontation. Confrontation is is difficult. You know, we sometimes, depending on your personality, but for the most most of us, we would avoid it. Um, and yet, to be a good Christian, you know, that's confrontational soul winning is mm -hmm. the first thing. And then trying to help converts grow is another thing. And then putting it's, that into your family. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting that you're saying that. I I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what. It just just the correlation of family and you know church and the mm -hmm. church family and Ministry. growing up IFB and what does that mean and what are the similarities and I, I feel like you know so goes the family so goes the church and the family has broken down to the point where churches are exactly the same and I think about what is it that is so dangerous to families that keeps them from being able to have relationships like this and you know the friction being willing to have that confrontation you know you think of um, the eagle in the eagle's nest what does what does as the eagle gets older what does the mama do you know starts pushing them out starts yeah. making the nest prickly and uh, making it uncomfortable why is it to harm the the eagle no to to push it to be better mm -hmm. to teach it that it can do more and i think as a family unit that's something that dad is always in good you know dad you've always encouraged i feel like it's a recurring theme in god's word that god wants us to to do better mm -hmm. to constantly be perfected and I feel like this generation, you know, if you look at the church, this generation is one that loves being comfortable, mm -hmm. hates mm -hmm. any kind of discomfort, discomfort or, or confrontation, mm -hmm. almost looks at it as though it is evil. the aggressor it's and evil. it is the wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. When in reality, that's backwards. Yeah. And, and we should be, we should desire, not please make me uncomfortable, but you know, <laughs> we, should, yeah. we should desire to- well, loving to, correction. To, to yeah. be better. Yeah. The Bible says, uh, uh, through desire, um, a man seek, basically seeketh the intermeddle with all wisdom. Right. You know, when, you with, when you're meddling with stuff, <laughs> all right, something's going to happen, okay? <laughs> but what's, what's the cause of that? Desire. You have to have the want to. And I think about this all the time. What makes us such driven kids, like people, mm -hmm. adults now? What makes us driven, passionate about what we think, what we believe, and what we do? What makes that? Because we were always, we were taught from a young age, you should want to be better, do better, no matter what it is, whether it's a coloring sheet preaching or... preaching to you guys constantly where it says in the Bible, Jesus said, greater works will you do. Mm -hmm. I think putting that in front of us, even though God put us in small places all the time, I was always saying, God's got something big for us. Let's do something, look for something mm -hmm. big to do. You can't look at the family 
and think that a good family is one that's comfortable. Yeah. One that everyone just is, yeah. yay, life is great. I love you, man. I'm, well, I do love you, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, where, where you're willing to have those it, hard conversations, okay. the confrontation, mm-hmm. be willing to be corrected yeah. by your brother, sister, father, you know, son. It, yeah. it, it's going to be that way. And to look at it and say, that's wrong, shows just how far away we have, the church has gotten, that teaching has gotten, that biblical leadership has gotten in, in like IFB when yeah. it comes to how the, church, how the church and family should I be. I think the reality is that we all struggle because there are times where we just, I hate to say it, we hate each other. Can we get each other's nerves? Mm-hmm. But I think that's one of the things I feel like God has given us, and that is this... We pull each other back. There's times where our natural service to Christ, whether it's Memorial Day, picnic time, mm-hmm. whether it's camp times, we pull together and work together and we have fun. We you know, do those things mm-hmm. together. Um, Big day our, projects. Well, not just that, but family vacation. You know, Pete, you know, I know it's like coming in the outside and I took Jill away from her family and you know, you've got your family and it's like I don't want to go to that family vacation. I want to go to my ward family vacation. Totally understand it. But there's always that struggle to I want to keep you guys. Let's let's do this. Let's pull because we need that's the time when we need to make ourselves fellowship, get back mm-hmm. on the same page again, because we're working the rest of our life with each other. Yeah. And I and I think it's an interesting point, you know, sitting here thinking about that, you know, Pete, Kaylee, Court, those who've come into our family. A family that's tight knit. To be honest, it's kind of hard to get other things into a tight knit family. <laughs> so, like, you know, that's why I'm poor single. Court, you're the last one in. <laughs> no, hopefully not the last. Yeah, no, right. I said that's why I'm still single. Well, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm saying, there's a, there's a natural. We're all close. We've had the same experiences. Mm-hmm, we know each other. We, right. And you're bringing in a new person. It's just, it's like you got to figure out how to adapt and make the person a part of you. And there's that extra friction that now because you're I like think that's next week topic. Is it? I think it's. Um, well, it's what's, inter- what's interesting, what I'm curious is, I think we all have a little bit of an advantage in the respect, like, sort of like you said, like, we're not going anywhere, like, right now. Mm-hmm. So all those difficulties and things, because we work and serve so closely together, we've got to work through those things because you can't just ignore them. But what would you think from from something that we haven't experienced, but what if... And in the future, how, how do you still keep that, mm-hmm. that same type of relationship, holding each other accountable, working on things, when one of us or two of us or three of us, what, what if God calls us apart? Mm-hmm. Before that question gets answered, I wanted to just finish that last little bit of what I was saying. Oh, sorry. Tight-knit family, sometimes difficult to get in. Once you're in, though, you're part of that tight-knit family, and the other side of it, it's hard to get out. Your whole family, everybody expects you to just, you're, you're, you can't just run away. All right, you're here. You're part of us now. Yeah. You're one of us. You will be. A I can only answer it from the mind of preparation in my mind. Uh, humility demands that I look at each one of you men and realize that you could very easily go off to your own ministries. Um, pride says. Now, what can I do to make sure that never happens? <laughs> um, Slash the tires. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Because a, 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 a true heart's felt desire of mom, mom and I is obviously, if God would let us write it, if God can make all of you happy and we can all stay together and do fulfill God's call in our life, and then sure, we would like that. But I cannot say any clearer than this. Every time I've testified about um, each one of you coming into this world, I'm going to cry. Don't. It'll hurt. (laughs) The first thing that mom and I did, the first time she held the baby, was pray and said, Lord, this is not our child. This is yours. We are stewards. And just... Maybe you'll be 30, and God will call you away. No, you will. That's Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) And I can say that it is a commitment 
to providing, and I've taught you this, if you're saying the will of God is, come sit down and talk. Don't, don't come to my office tomorrow and say mm-hmm. you're leaving next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't believe you. But start early talking about it. You work as hard conditioning the rest of the family for it as I do, as you expect me to make it happen for you. So it's, it's a commitment to walk through each step together. And, and if you're doing it too fast, I'm going to say this isn't fair to the rest of the family right now. We need to take one step at a time. So you need to check your life and balance it out. Make sure you're in the will of God. Conversations are just 100% mm-hmm. think, part of mm-hmm. all I think of you said, said that at the beginning, too, mm-hmm. which was us as a family wanting to be a part of your next move. Who, If if that's you moving to pastor or who, whoever in this family, if it ever gets to that point, being, being a part of it. It's just going to set us up for continuing that there's, relationship. There's many aspects to that thing because, you, let's say I was going to, I was a kid, I was the kid, and I, I was a young adult, married, and I was coming to my dad. I'd have to realize in my head, uh, does does he see this on me? Mm-hmm. Does he see this call coming? Um, is he going to think that my wife is pushing me to do this? My kids are pushing me to do this. Someone's wooing me away. Because that is all my responsibility to communicate clearly. Mm-hmm. And to avoid mm-hmm. making your wife look bad, your friends look bad, another, you know, and and to make sure you have to you have to talk about how God's touching your heart. How God did it, when God did it, what sermon he did it in, what Bible time, what Bible scripture. It has to be something that has to be above reproach. That is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because you can't remove the paranoia. If you Mm -hmm. came to me tomorrow and said, "Uh, God's calling in Missouri, I would look right at her. I would look right at her. Uh, (laughs) That would be be some medicine. Mm That would be tough for me and mom to take. It would be hard for me not to get up there and preach. Forget everybody else. I'm preaching to you, and um, and that's not that is not how you want a transition. Now, mm-hmm. if you're pastoring, you fix things. That happens once in a while, and you're just fixing things. But if you're transitioning to transitioning, I shouldn't use that word. <laughs> if you're moving you to the next good point word. of God's call in your life, you don't want to leave fractured. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, I left five places. Mm-hmm. Never burn a bridge. Yep. I could always go. I had each preacher come back and preach for me, and they didn't believe the same as mm-hmm. me. There were bad things. We were hurt, but I did not leave. We we're not fractured. Mm-hmm. And if there's anything that I purpose to take with me through those different pastorates was, if my if my God f- sees fit to call my sons or my son-in-law to another place of service. The first thing is I'm going to look at that as an honor because mm-hmm. he used me to train you. And I always wanted to uh, widen my stake, widen my uh, tent. tent anyway. So I would look at it as when you go start a church in St. Louis or whatever, and, uh, <laughs> I'll tell everybody I did that. <laughs> you know, because, but in, the, in my heart, I would be proud. Yeah. But I, I would hate to feel like you felt pushed into that mm-hmm. and frustrated because you didn't talk and there was issues and if we would have talked about things then you wouldn't have mm-hmm. grown a desire to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's such a balance there to um, to make right decisions. In the end uh, you may have to live with the fact that yeah I could have done something different and maybe I did push but God's on his throne and he's going to work it out. And the most important thing is if you're following the Lord and I'm following the Lord, then I can only answer yeah. for me. I can't answer for you. Mm-hmm. I, and, but you're going to always live in the shadow of, well, I want my dad's approval. Mm-hmm. I want my mom's approval. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want my brothers and sisters approval. And that never you leaves. You can't <laughs> get rid of that. That's yeah. what family right. is. That's what blood does different than water. <laughs> And I think the the part about us all having the same beliefs, destination, and goals is what will tra- I say transcend that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because 
if you truly want to please the Lord. It's exactly what your parents will be pleased. Yeah. And that's how you honor your parents is by honoring the Lord. And so I think too, I never felt like growing up, I always thought the normal thing would be to get married and move away to some, whether I married a pastor or a missionary or something, I don't want to speak to the other guys. I didn't never thought this would be, I feel so blessed. <laughs> it wasn't really the plan, but it's pretty epic. It's a secret desire mom and I, but we just had to trust the Lord. If he gives it to us, great. If he doesn't. Right, but there's a difference between having a desire and then saying to your kids, this is the expectation, and I don't think I ever, I never felt yeah, that. Yeah, but I think the key is, here's the key to this. If you get to do this, it will only come through everybody putting their head down and doing what mm -hmm. God says to do. Yeah. If we're not doing, if I'm not reading my Bible and I'm not praying and I'm not telling others about Christ and I'm not living a righteous life, it would make sense that people would grow away from mm -hmm. me. Because we each has to take responsibility to being a good Christian. Right. It always mm -hmm. comes down to that. In our relationship that. with the Lord. I remember one time when Joel looked at me, half jokingly, half serious, said, oh, I think you have lower standards than I do. And I don't even remember what we were talking about. And I was like, I was so... Close. <laughs> well, I, I think it was something about clothing. You punched her right in the arm. No, 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 no. It was but not I close. I <laughs> felt so like, what? Um, but I do remember because I... I genuinely love the Lord. I went away. I wasn't even mad. Um, I think it pressured her to try and tell me what she was talking about. Um, but just that she felt that she had the, she could be candid with me about mm -hmm. a thought that she had made me stop and review what's the message my personal choices are sending out that I am changing from what mm -hmm. I've been raised and taught and okay, in that specific area, what do I actually believe? And then, you know, I made some decisions, and we never talked. Did I actually say that? You thing? did. I know. It was a shock. <laughs> no, and One I One of the few things you said. I know. I think it was but about who, who you date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I changed and never dated again. <laughs> no, it wasn't about that. So. Um, I, so. I'm convinced that if God did move all of you to different places... <clears throat> I would resign and go with you. No, I'm just <laughs> but, if, but if God moved you to different places, that I think my biggest concern isn't that you would leave here, is that I would take on a new concern and worry, if you will, or prayer burden, whatever you would call it. Because then it's like, so you didn't grow a beard? <laughs> uh, so, That's his biggest uh, word. so, no, so uh, I mean, which direction is your pulpit ministry going to go? Where mm -hmm. is yeah. your dress standards going to go? What, That's more what I was gonna, talking about. Yeah, I was like, going to say. I think this is what you're. That I was at, more right? talking about when that happens. Right. If even other families that have that, where they have different part of their family members that are scattered across America, but are all serving God, but still holding true from a father standpoint to the family and then brothers and sisters one to well, another saying, well, that? what? why don't you do? You know. I think the important thing is that we can't, once we part ways, and even before, obviously, you can't do this. It's what we always, is family loyalty. You can't, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but the grace, it was, it was clear across America that the sons were against how their dad ran, yeah. ran his church. And I, I, if you leave and go do your church, I can't get on social media. I can't get up in my pulpit and say, um, and run you down. And you can't run, you shouldn't run me down. Yeah. It just can't. Mm -hmm. And yet what, addressing but issues. The, thing, the, the work on the front end has to, do, has to be this. If what you believe, you keep saying, oh, we believe like you, we're on the same point. Okay. Remember, when you're on your own, it's gonna. That's the fruit. That's we're gonna know then. Mm -hmm. So, it's just the it's the course of life in anything. Only it's so much more sensitive because this is the big time. You don't get any higher than service for the Lord. Mm -hmm. How important is the King James Bible to all of us, mm -hmm. whether together mm -hmm. or apart? Mm -hmm. How important is our dress standards and our salt of the earth? And how important is that? 
we shouldn't just agree to stand strong on it because we know how our dad is. <laughs> how important is that? Because when you leave, it tells everybody. And I have always painted that for you guys as your responsibility that you will carry that, whether it's the, the spouses you choose, where you choose them from, it says something. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, mom and I are committed to our children. We're committed to our family. So we'll always want to do right, and this is what we'll do. And if you go a different direction, I'm, we'll love you, but you know Mm -hmm. that's your choices are your choices we've made all our choices mm -hmm. we've made our choices so i think in uh practicality i was sitting thinking about this what what would my desire be if let's just hypothetically put myself in that situation i think to maintain a continued strong relationship would be to continue with the same communication i always had you know being willing you know, to call my dad and tell him about my Sunday. Mm -hmm. Be willing to say, hey, I got this problem. What do you think? And you look at me and go, well, son, you're an idiot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, or to, my, but, our but, relationship would change at that point. Well, no, know, I'm, to I'm, some saying, degree. I'm saying for me to continue to have a desire to have that same, uh, that same influence from you, you know, where, where you want to call, where, why I'm saying where we want to, talk to each other. I think I think there's a there's a perception where when the kids go off and serve do their own service that it's their own service. Mm -hmm. Who says that I can't be in the service and be a pastor somewhere and still be serving the Lord be with my family? Does yeah. that make sense like be be serving the Lord with my family? One of the things and I was just thinking about this, yeah. one of the things I love the most about like I was thinking about it. What do I what makes I honestly feel like what makes our the ministry here so much different when it comes to us kids serving the Lord together. I look at ministries around the country, and uh, I think sometimes you'll see individual members promoted for a specific, excuse me, for a specific thing. We like, oh, this thing was this kid. This thing was this kid. How? When's the last time we we don't do that? It's always like like we went and installed the sound system. We did that together. Us, we did that. It wasn't. I did that. It was we did that. Mm. And everything we do is that way. The CD, we all did that. Mm -hmm. The yeah, yeah, the the like work here, input. we all did that. Mm -hmm. The and I think that's the difference. It's, I don't know how many people can look at our church and be like, yeah, well, this right here, this is this kids, and this is this kids, and right. not not that you can't see that we all have some self ownership in it, but that we are all in involved and invested so in bus, each other's things. Right. The bus conference is David. It's not any one of us all. that sits back and goes, right. this is mine and you can't be a part of it. Like, I want to be known for yeah. this. Mm -hmm. it's not, I think it's each one of you have avenues of leadership that we all participate in, but you are the leader. You know, I, Pete's, he does the building stuff and we just get on it. Now, but really, if Pete is honest and he looks at everything that's been done, he's got a lot to be thankful for that God's used him to do. And we just helped him. Mm -hmm. Whether helping him was, what are you doing, you idiot? No. <laughs> or, you know, we just helped him. Mm -hmm. That was his area. Yours was the, you know, all the technology side of thing and the sound system and the piano playing and how much did that we do? I mean, we helped, we encouraged, we we did what we could do. But that's yours. Right. But yours, we're all sitting I'm, here well, on the radio. Well, what, <laughs> but what I'm getting yeah. at is we don't, it's not like we I brand ourselves yeah. that way. Right. right. Mm -hmm. We don't brand ourselves where it's like, I got a whole page of the media and it's got my picture on there. And it's like, this is all about me and where how I yeah. brought the media to where it is today. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. We're, it's good. about, as a family, we did, you know, we did, it's... As a team. It, as a team, it's not even necessarily that we sit back and say, we did this as a team. It's just, we're just, this is just Serving the ministry. Serving the Lord. We're doing. We're finding every avenue we possibly can. Right. It's right. different from, I think, the kids grow up and they think that, oh, now I got to go find my thing. Right. I got to go do my thing. When mm -hmm. I am doing yeah. my thing, it's what God wants me to do. It just so happens that we're all doing it together. Right. Well, I sometimes sit back and wonder, you know, look at both of you, you know, all three of you guys, I think. Well, I don't want to get in your way. I mean, obviously, I want God to get the most out of good Christians. 
you know, you spend time. It, what, what's the difference between you, you three guys and me winning a Joe off the street? And he gets excited, gets called to preach, and gets all fired up, gets, gets a call to Zimbabwe. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to just hold on to him, and mm -hmm. then he doesn't lead all those people mm -hmm. to the Lord. I wouldn't want to be in your guys' way either. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy being able to do this together. I just keep sitting back, going, "It's not like we got this mega ministry, and they're they're not. We, we're not in an area where we got all these trees with fruit on it. You just walk out and pick one up and look. Look, I had <laughs> I had fifty five on my bus today. Mm -hmm. you know, right. What, right. I, and I didn't even visit yesterday. <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> There's some yeah. cities you can walk out the front door and lead someone to Christ. Here, if you walk out the front yeah. door, they they don't even understand. So what, what I'm saying is that's my, that's my. There's life. nobody there. That's been my life of ministry. It's been very hard. It's very hard, you know, Brewster, a town of 22 people. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very hard to call yourself, in the eyes of IFB, a soul winner right. when they're out there preaching in conferences. If you don't have somebody saved every day, day. yeah, you're not at a local New Testament church. It's when and you take that verse, that, every creature. Yeah, <laughs> you know, witness yeah. to the cows. But, I mean, you live with the frustration that you feel like, I must be out of the will of God because mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't have... How can I have? It's 60 miles to the closest town. How can I have one person say? And if you have a heart to see people saved, and then God puts you in this little area, what's he doing? Is he doing that? Or did I screw up and not? I'm not in the will of God. You, you eventually have to say, no, God's doing that. He's doing it for a reason. I have this huge appetite. I don't know why he's doing it, but he's putting me here. And he's slowing me down. And he's putting on the proverbial Jake break. And I have to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And while I'm learning to be okay with that, I'm fighting everybody else going, liberal, you're not a soul winner. <laughs> you don't love God. You're, mm -hmm. you know, you're just hiding out there in the sand. Hills. Go to the inner city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and here I sit, now the shoe's on your foot. I'm looking at you guys going, now you're men. Mm -hmm. Go out and build the largest church in the world. You show them what Reeves can do. You know, well, but I watch God doing some a uh, what of mm -hmm. the same thing it, in, in yeah. you guys. Sorry, go ahead. I'm yeah. just I just had a commercial. Go for it. Away. It just reminded me. It, saying that any particular geographical location is more important to send pastors or preachers anywhere is spiritually stupid. Because that's up to God, what's most important. It's yeah. not the where, yeah. it's the what. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if anybody is surrenders the call to preach. I don't care if they go to New York or if they go to... Brewster. Kansas, you know, somewhere, you know, back... Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They're everywhere you go, everywhere, there's people that need to be saved. And I think there's this little bit of a... I, I've experienced personally, and maybe to some extent that could be, you it's know, because you're from, right now. from your smaller, because we're from a smaller area, you could be a little bit more sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I, I've felt it in college all the time, like, mm -hmm. oh, you're from, you know, Put hold on, on collar, collar. And they, and it's like an rant. immature, it's like say. an immature, like, make fun of where, where you're, yeah. it's like, it's like somebody making it's fun of your, your height. Important. It's like somebody making fun of your height, like, you have any, can you that. can change that and they can change it or they have, a, they're better because it's just, it's just immature. It's adolescent. Spiritually, same thing. It's like, you know, it's, a, it's exactly what you said. Just serve God wherever he called and you. And that's the struggle I'm talking mm -hmm. about is knowing that I, I, I have four children that have the ability to be very thirsty for the Lord. Great, big, huge hearts. N not one of you don't want somebody saved every week. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not one of you don't want somebody down the aisle and baptize or a, a room full of teenagers or a mm -hmm. couple's class or, you know, not one of you don't want that. And it's because we are in a small place, it's easy. It's easy to look out and see these other places where it seems like people are tripping in the Sunday school classes, mm -hmm. you know, tripping over converts. And you look at these, the premier speakers that are pastoring these churches and, you know, and you stop and think about, wow, what did they do to get this big church? And how did that, you know? And I just don't want you, I don't want you, if God moves you, make sure you, I, this, this is not, cut, cut, I'm just, all I'm saying is, is, I'm enjoying our family. Mm -hmm. If God puts us together the rest of our life, I think 
we will have a unique uh, opportunity to show all of the independent fundamental Baptists first and foremost, this is what family can do if they just will persevere through their own personal rabbit trails in mm -hmm. life and just stay true to the cause and walk in the will of God and be committed and work through problems. I really think at the other end, 20 years, 25 years, however old, when I die, I think our ministry will be so much bigger and stronger. I don't know how much bigger it is. Maybe it'll be five more people. Maybe it'll be 25 more. Maybe it'll be 250. Maybe we'll be sitting in a 750 seat auditorium. I don't know that I have that kind of thirst. I mean, mm -hmm. we're sitting on 4.2 acres and I want to build a 750 seat auditorium. Do you understand how big that is? That would make the Catholic Church small. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be done? I don't want to hear no. Mm -hmm. I want to hear yes. I'd rather die attempting it. Yeah. With my family. We can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, just because I am curious, Courtney, because your family um, is all, to my knowledge, still in IFB churches serving the Lord where they can with whether that's on staff or not at a church. Um, but maybe that question of how do you keep, you know, close ties? Because I think you were a very close family growing up. So how do you keep close ties now that almost all of you are in different areas and now your parents are moving? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I was just curious. FaceTime. <laughs> that's great. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, communication. Mm -hmm. And being involved with spiritual things still. So my brother-in-law, Cody, is an assistant pastor in Missouri for a church. And he's reached out to David a couple times, just about youth stuff, mm -hmm. youth questions, mm -hmm. how to start a youth conference or something of that sort. And I know Ben has talked to David as well. So just still communicating, mm -hmm. being involved. Having the same like direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And probably enjoying talking about those things. I thought it was cool that your dad has come down, I think, twice now to visit and just to check in. And um, I would love that if I ever moved away. Dad. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just that. Keep me away. I think Sweet it's neat to watch other families. I feel like Peter's family is very close, even though they have, you geographical. know, oh, geographical. They're everywhere, but they're also. Um, however it was instilled by your parents into you and your siblings, there's that connection of looking out for each other. Um, whether it was the guys looking out for the girls and they, where they're at in the States and what they're doing. Um, Matt always trying to make sure he's helping the girls get to Thanksgiving and Christmases so that you guys can be a family um, is neat. And even Steven, you know, spending Christmases out yeah, here. It's fun when the whole it's, family comes. It really like, is fun. I know we're not all on the same page, but because that one thing at least was instilled where it was, hey, this is important. Mm -hmm. um, I think, too, it's had a spiritual effect on even Stephen. <laughs> 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 so just that influence because you're willing to even handle those hard times with mm. extended family members being candid with each other so being willing to take the slings and arrows mm -hmm. i think it's real important for each one of you to envision your future envision what you uh how you what you want to see in your kids and how you want to feel when your job is over in other words when your children are passed off to their spouses i know it's not over but you need to envision that, and you'll obviously envision the best that you can. I, most people don't envision, oh, I'm envisioning my kids all dying of cancer. No, you know, <laughs> But you envision the best, and the, then sit down and figure out how to get that, and, and work that, just start working. Now, that plan will change, because things don't always work, mm -hmm. but if you're heading that direction, you sit down, and you plan that out, and you do that. Mom and I will stand back and just watch. <laughs> we'll enjoy it, even if it entails us seeing you go different directions as far as away from us. Geographically. Yeah, ge geographically. If for some reason you go away spiritually, um, you'll know that um, 
you know, the lighthouse will always be here and you can come back and you know what to expect. And um, mm -hmm. we are yeah. your prayer, par prayer warriors here and we'll always love you. And you'll know also that you'll have a feeling of we don't approve, that you don't get, that you don't get, there's no way you can do it and have us say, oh, how you doing? You know, mm -hmm. just, that's mm -hmm. never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to go away, that feeling will always be there. And that's what the world hates. They hate that. So a lot of parents are doing all they can. Matter of fact, all they can do is go away from what they believe to make their kids feel better. And mm -hmm. we're just not going to do that. So. There's a great verse I was thinking of in Ecclesiastes 4.12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Mm. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Yeah. I do think there is a great strength in family and keeping each other accountable. That can be more difficult as a family goes off in geographical directions, uh, other, you know, different directions. Establishing what we believe, though, together growing up has mm -hmm. helped us a lot and knowing that we we have had convictions about it. So if, you know, if Will and Kaylee go off in, out and into the world and it doesn't work out and Kaylee leaves him and they get a divorce and um, everybody at this table knows I'm not paying any of his bills. I mean, I'm not. I love him dearly. I don't can call me and say I need money. Look, son, you know how to work. I trained you, mm. you know, go out and I, I'm here. I love you, but I'm, I'm not here to. Which we know you wouldn't even yeah. have to say that. <laughs> I would. I would. But that's what I'm saying. Because right. we're all collectively grown through those principles. I think we all would agree in that principle right now. Do you think parents should help their adult children after they have ruined their marriage and they're not willing to get into church and not willing to be submissive and they're not willing to honor God mm -hmm. the way no. that they were taught to do when they were a kid. Mm -hmm. Come all the way back, just like when you were taught as a kid. If you're mm -hmm. not willing to do that, why should you invest money? Right. We, mm -hmm. I think we're all on the same page there. Right. So um, I think that's where those these families, they never taught that mm -hmm. to their kids and they never established that. So we have a lot of biblical principles and concepts that we all agree on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mom, I love that verse, partially because, you know, it's a threefold cord not quickly broken. That just shows the strength. But the other thing it shows is that means there's going to be more strain. Because mm. if, you, if you have something that's not going to be broken, that means it's going to be able to handle more strain, which means it will be more. It will be tested. It, it will be tested. Yeah, exactly. So and I think there's a lot of a, yeah. a, a lack of families who are willing to have that strain and that that testing and so I think uh, I think for us to continue to be strong as a family if God's desires for us to be together we have to maintain in our own mind a realization that God has responsibilities for us mm -hmm. and we have a reason to stick together because that's what causes us to go to each other and work and because we're ministering to each other and ministering to our relationships but if that rope is going to be put under a lot more strain, what's at the other end of the rope? And mm -hmm. we're pulling on one way. What's it? How many lost people are we? Mm -hmm. how many, mm -hmm. what, what is it we're doing? Right. And what's that I, wanna, I want us as a family to look at that and say, okay, that will fuel my fire. Look at this responsibility God's put on us. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be honest, I just don't know. I don't, I, and let's may change in the future. But I just don't know another another ministry like ours, with all the kids embracing the ministries here and feeling that God gave them that to do. Mm -hmm. So it's, your, it's what you will need. Sorry, hon. It's what you will need when you're in your own ministry and with your family. Mm -hmm. You will want to produce the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the value of that, and I think that's what we're saying. That's why we're doing growing up IFB. Because so many people look back at what they had, what they were given, and aren't valuing it right. properly. And I'm not saying that there weren't things wrong, in, but 
you know, we could we could have a program like that <laughs> just about our own family. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids could sit there and do a program on how bad mom and dad were, <laughs> and they would have genuine gripes, and they'd be accurate. But about yours, be, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but being able to see the value of it, mm-hmm. and then the older you get, being able to retain keeping the value of it in your mind. I've seen so many people. Um, even when I was in college, and I think even Dr. Howes, I remember him saying something about this, how he would get young men on staff, and they would get to a certain age, and then they would grow out of grow out of wanting to be under authority, mm-hmm. grow out of wanting to be influenced. And they would go, and they would think, because they had accomplished all these things under that ministry, that they were going to, quote unquote, go off and be great. you know. And they'd go off, and it's t- like taking the, the coal away from the, the fire, the ember, and setting it over, and it would fizzle and, and die out. And I'm not saying, hopefully, we raised our children, that yeah, if God could both. use them. I think it's both. Right. Yeah. But, but the value of it, understanding the value is what keeps mm-hmm. that heat going. I think um, a verse that very clearly exemplifies what you're talking about, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And I think about the, the viewpoint of a lot of people today is, uh, this is almost like a resume badge, you know, what can I what can I be taught or what can I learn from this experience? Whereas the Bible says where your treasure is put, where where what what you are invested in. And I think about this, the older I get, the more I look at everything that God has used me or our family to do. I find it harder and harder the older I get to go, yeah, I feel like God's just gonna move me to another place. It's like I've invested so much here. There's so much of my treasure mm-hmm. which makes so much of my heart. Here. What do you think the number uh, which, one thing is that you have to deal with in order to uh, I don't know how to ask In order to keep thinking that way, you mean? I don't know. Strike that back up. I was just I was just saying that um, I feel like the verse exemplifies exactly what we're talking about, the value. Mm-hmm. Seeing the value in it. Right. And uh, if you're if you are going to have whether you're a parent or a child, if you're going to be able to serve the Lord with your family or create a family that desires to it. serve the Lord, you have to put all your, you have to pour yourself into that. And and not for the sake yeah. of, so that I can stand up and say, oh, my family's all, but but because you see, you see what God wants to do with you and what God can do in your children and desire to accomplish that. May I say, uh, I never went somewhere because I thought I would make a big splash. <laughs> this is um, true. Um, I believe there's actually more greatness in those in my shadow than in me. Mm-hmm. Now, if God puts a desire in a person to, to be in the ministry and that ministry position is of leadership, they really, they'll stand on their own two feet, but they still stay, they still are in the shadow Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. what they learned. Mm -hmm. And that's where I went back to saying, we can't, uh, we can't eat each other alive at that point. You know, Uh, I just want everybody that's at this table to deal with living in the shadow of their leader. I don't feel like I'm a, uh, I don't believe and never tried to be a, a platform speaker, a leader of independent fundamentalism. I have a very strong opinion of our movement. I'm very much for it. At the same time, very much against it. I think you can be both. I think to be candid and to be honest is something our movement needs. Yeah, it's like- uh, and everybody wants to protect the brand name by not telling the truth about what we need to do to change and give our movement more traction. Um, whereas I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I'm just going to say it. If mm-hmm. it hurts your little feelers. It's oh, so well. refreshing, too, to see that it's not just so that you can hype up book sales or something. Yeah, so, I don't. Uh, I'm just throwing that commercial right, out. I, I know what you're <laughs> saying. I just don't have, I don't, I don't have an appetite for right, that. Right. But um, I feel like the greatest thing that Bill Reeves is offering is what God's called me to in North Platte, Nebraska. Just what we're doing. Day-to-day pastoring mm-hmm. here. 
And we, anybody who's been called anywhere yeah. should feel the exact yeah. same way. I have a huge commitment, first of all, first and foremost, to my four kids and their spouses and my grandkids. And that hasn't changed from day one. The ministry comes after that, and I'm just blessed to have a ministry to bring along that facilitates a place for all of you to do the same thing with your family. You, you, have, you all have families. You have wives and kids. And God's given me a ministry that you can do things in. I'm just excited to get to do it. I'm mm -hmm. just, right. just glad. And then that's, to me, I will do everything I can to make sure that may, that is consistent, consistently for you. Um, and then the church, obviously, will people will get one to the Lord if if you're living for God, and, right. mm -hmm. and the church will grow because that's how God builds a church, and buses will run, and school will grow, you know. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think the underdog feeling of being in a smaller place is sometimes helpful, knowing that God uses small things. I mean, I mm -hmm. I think I think it helps keep us motivated because it's like oh you think i can't succeed hmm. oh i'll show you you know mm -hmm. not I just not a prideful way but do. exactly seeing mm -hmm. what god already what he's yeah. done like how did that even happen that's uh -huh. i think more dad and i we sit there and say hey, how did god even carve out a ministry in north platte nebraska but with his help okay that's exciting i think we should go to a song yep. i mean there's so much Pete didn't get to say anything. Did you say two words? He said a couple I words. I, I did. did. That's two words. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, go, let's go to a commercial because okay. we got questions on here. I'm let's sure. go to a commercial. Don't forget a commercial. Uh, let's go to a song. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy our books. At. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Uh, the, um, don't forget that the next segment, The Third Degree, uh, is where you can send us your difficult questions. We have a few that we're going to try and answer here. Uh, if we don't receive any more by the time we answer the last question that we have seen, then we will shut her down for the night. It's been a long one. Been a good one. We're going to go to a song. The song is My Brother's Keeper by Our Fathers Four. We'll be right back. Welcome to the segment where we answer your questions, no matter how difficult they may be. Have at it. Give us the third degree. 920-940-8275 is the phone number if you'd like to text your question. Or if you are watching online, youtube.com slash Radio slash live. Or you can go to listen.canaanradio.com. You can put your question in the chat. We've got a couple that we're going to try and answer here real quick at the end of the show. Miss uh, Mrs. Tripp asked, what... Uh, what do you say to the prodigal child? They have the same upbringing, same gospel, same teachings, same rules, but choose differently. Well, it's hard to answer this question because I don't have any personal experience with that. Um, as a pastor, I would, you know, I would say stay where you were when they left. Um, Tell them you miss them, and they know what's right. And um, I think it's important that you don't televise to the rest of the kids that are doing right that you're okay with it. So mm -hmm. I guess that will curtail how you do Christmases or Thanksgivings or fellowships or family reunions. Having a, a doctrinal position on separation solves a lot of that because it's a Bible issue, not a family issue. Mm -hmm. So if you're breaking your doctrinal positions on separation and church attendance because they're away from the Lord and they, they say, this is where we'll meet you and we'll be with you, just tells the rest of the kids that you didn't really believe. So just stay where you're at. And you're going to always feel pain um, because that is like it's an open wound and you have to learn to manage that pain and carry that pain and and, and be productive uh, while doing it and keep hope and keep faith that God 
can change their lives. Um, but make sure that you're never telling or televising to anyone that um, you're changing your direction for your kids that are going the wrong way. So I don't, again, uh, unqualified in the, in this in the sense I don't have any children that are are away from the Lord. I I think at times a couple times I with my kids growing up before they were married, I've had to put the mm -hmm. put my foot down and. Say you're going this way, I'm going this way, and if you want to keep walking with me, you got to change your direction. And that was a choice that they made, and and our fellowship was restored, and everything's good. But um, you're dealing, it seems to me, you're dealing with older kids that are now have family, possibly even kids of their own. So very difficult to sit back and and watch, but don't get bitter. Don't don't get bitter, um, but uh, stay faithful to the Lord. Yeah. Um, got another question here. This one's asked by Jeff. I'm going to try and word it. I think the way that he was wanting it to be asked. Um, Pastor Reeves, uh, how would you feel if one of the boys was called to a position at a church that's pastored by someone you're close to? So, for instance, like Pastor Tyson. Man, honor. If that's what God has for them, um, I would first call Pastor Tyson and say, I just want you to know, you bit off a lot. <laughs> so, you, you are in for a fight. Uh, not, gonna... that, not that there, there would be uh, anything but helpful to him, but there's, I know my son's um, convictions are very strong. And so they would uh, definitely impact their ministry in many ways. So I would, but I would, I would be, I would be fine if that's what God wants them to do. I, I know there have been people interested in my children. Um, We're good stock. Yeah, you're good stock. <laughs> that's what they said. And uh, <laughs> I've always, I think, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always been like, if that's what God wants, right. yes. fine. But yeah. I've also watched my kids openly make statements why would I want to do that? <laughs> Why would I want to put myself through going mm -hmm. somewhere where it's like I got to start all over again? Mm -hmm. But that was at, at that time in their life too. So, But I, obviously if the person that they were going to serve under was a liberal, I would question them on it. So a liberal like Brother Tyson, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brother Jeff asked another question. This one kind of cracks me up. If you were to retire or no longer physically be able to pastor, how would you want the people left to use uh, left to decide between Will and David as the next pastor? I I honestly believe there's there's a third one in the mix. Over I know, here. yeah, I know. Uh, Point to us. Uh, David, I think said, I gave a very I educated, yeah, answer. very well, no, good answer, balanced. Good answer. Unfortunately, it's yeah. not the correct. David said looks, and then David said so me. <laughs> Well, let me know when I can born. answer. <laughs> can I answer? Sure. All right. I think I would just tell my people, trust the process. The leader, the next leader will rise. Um, one's not better than the other, but all three are different. And I don't think there should be any jockeying to take over the throne. I think... This church has already been taught how to seek out their next pastor. Mm -hmm. and prayer, fasting, um, entertain one one candidate at the at a time. Uh, the doctrinal stances need to be strong, and so I do think our church is unique that it would have three men right off the bat to entertain. Uh, but as we get closer to that. I think the cream would just rise to the top. It, not cream as in one's better than the right. other, but the right one. And it, would, I wanna, it would be a God and thing. you never know. The person I marry will probably take over. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I, I want to make one statement just from the aspect of the person, you know, as part of the question. Um, I think in a lot of things, Dad, as you talk and you're giving examples and you'll mention and say, if, you know, one of you were to take the pastorate, I think it needs to be made very clear. I am... I don't know how you feel or how you feel. I'm speaking for myself here. I am not serving the Lord at North Platte Baptist Church because I am looking towards a day 
when I will be the pastor. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not why I'm. That's here. wisdom. Right. No, but you I'm don't saying. Want it, trust me. <laughs> but I'm. But I'm saying. If so, let's say it happened. Let's say it did. Or let's say, Pete was was. You know the the folks of the church called Pete to be the pastor. I'm not. He, I'm. I would continue. Oh, I'm being, out of here. No, I'd continue. <laughs> I would continue being the same he would person. Serve. I would continue. If he, if he was going to be the pastor, oh, yeah. if he was yeah. going to be the pastor, you, you both know that you would have to go to him and say, our dad hired us. You didn't. Right. If you want us to stay, right. we've, we believe it's God's will for us to stay. And, and I'm saying, but I'm saying that's the difference. I, I, right. I think in a lot of examples that you use, you're making the correlation because it's just... People ask. It, it, yeah, you know, well, because it's. I think sometimes it's in people's heads, but we were not. We were not raised to think. Just stay or, here. And we then were you not can raised have... to serve because of the potential of something else. Yeah, mm-hmm. taking over. All three of these men have uh, very. They're they're very balanced in their strengths, but they all have edges that would propel this ministry forward. I've got curves, not edges. <laughs> 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 but they all they all have the they all have a way of looking looking at <laughs> so looking at ministering and and church leadership that I think would bring something that I I lack and if they go too far on that one thing obviously that could take it the wrong direction but I think if they stay balanced that natural part of who they are will sharpen my church or the church that I pastored. It will only benefit it. So I'm very secure in, I feel great that if I'm going to Wyoming next week and God takes me home, I'm secure that if there nobody wanted to come to North Platte, Nebraska to pastor, there are three men here that are fully capable and equipped that as they proceed through into their older years, they will bring so much good to this church, and it will be it'll be a healthy church. I don't have any. Doubt. And and I think the other perspective is the fact that God doesn't just call doesn't the church doesn't just call the pastor. God calls the pastor right. to the church. Right. So <clears throat> church isn't the only one deciding right. who the pastor is. Whoever right. is going to be the next next pastor is deciding if he wants to pastor that church. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I think exactly what you said it'd just be sort of a natural thing that mm-hmm. would just spiritually take. And place. that's the you know church has to pray fast because if you're not fasting I, they, a lot of people say they pray but I've never never had a church call me when I asked them did you fast where they said yes and I, th- I think how could you know the mind of God if you're mm-hmm. not praying and fasting mm-hmm. if you're not willing to give up food over this decision mm-hmm. who's mm-hmm. going to lead you and your children for the next 25 30 40 years how stupid knee-jerk reaction decision did you just make and I don't want my church to make that decision because I stood up and said, well, this son just gave me a new car, so pick him. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I don't want it to be... Pete, go ahead. I don't want it to <laughs> wow. be... I don't want people in their heads to think that anyone took over the, the pastorate because I groomed them for that. Mm-hmm. I groomed all of you to be leaders. Just lead. In everything you do, be good leaders, and God will God will sort it out. And the people need to fast and, and pray and ask questions. And... Last question here. Hey, can, can I jump in real quick? I, I just wanted to say this. That Did you want to throw no, your no name offense in the hat? to you <laughs> other guys, but uh, no, no. I was going to say, Pastor, please don't go hugging any other trees. Yeah. We're, we're not trying to get rid of you anytime yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. almost. Be them. careful. No okay? more tree hugging. He's not allowed to take his four wheeler up. <laughs> That's uh, right. He has to be supervised. Great point. <laughs> That's funny. We're gonna get him a life alert. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Reeves is gonna take the tape. I, I think it's funny yeah. because he you don't. Do you, were you wearing your Apple Watch? I was. It didn't. Yeah. Do you? Well, it didn't. It did it, it say, did? Have You have been in a crash. I, I went off. I must have hit cancel because. Oh, okay. Of, you don't remember. Oh no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Memory losses. So good. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Just like the My boys, name is Pastor like boys David boys. Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? I was just voted. In. I just request one thing: if any of you men, including you, JT, ever took over the pastorate because of my untimely death, take care of Mrs. Reeves. Mm. Right. That's all I ask. Right. I know I, they would, and I, I will take care of them too. 
You yeah. know it. <laughs> <laughs> She's always. I've always oh, no. heard you guys say you wanted to die together. So if you pass away, I know exactly what to do. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, my wow. life is in and danger. Is <laughs> <You're> <laughs> safe in your life. Right. Right. You're moving in, take... with, moving in with David. That's what you're <laughs> oh. That's death for sure. Okay. Uh, last question here. Um, wait, where to go? Oh, there it is. Uh, Dad, this is probably really for you. Um, what do you think about the legacy of Brother Russell Anderson, the right-hand man of Dr. Jack Kyle, since he passed away a few weeks ago? And you can... I would not be where I'm at if, it, if Dr. Russell Anderson didn't invest in Howes Anderson College. Okay. As far as anything else that Russell Anderson did, um, I... I I can't judge that, mm -hmm. but I can judge that he invested tons of money mm -hmm. into supporting the college that influenced me and Dr. Hiles who influenced me. And because of that, they influenced my father-in-law, <clears throat> they influenced my wife and her, her siblings. And I went into a church <clears throat> that offered me some direction and that was the, some of the tools that God put in my life to get me here. And I have to say this. Thank you. <laughs> and with that, we're going to close things up tonight. We want to thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Brook. David, Pastor, Peter, Mrs. Reeves, Jewel, Courtney, Hope, JT, thank you for another great episode you can find this episode uh, as a podcast on YouTube and anywhere podcasts can be listened to, hopefully within the next week or so. We have missed, I think the last episode is not quite out yet, Ooh. but all the rest of them are. We also need to announce, <clears throat> I wanted to add an episode <clears throat> on the King James Bible. I'd like everyone here to come back in <clears throat> and let's discuss on whether discuss the issue on the need for the King James Bible to be updated and our personal views of that and scriptural thoughts on that. I think independent fundamental Baptists need to hear the younger generation mm -hmm. collectively say to people like Joe Shakur, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, Short answer. No, God <laughs> says you will die. All right. Uh, but I think we need to have we need we do need a discussion on that. So we're going to do that. What's the last week? Is that at the end? Because we're going to move the last program back, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So and we'll week. stick that. I, in. Aren't we on vacation that week? No, no. That one's well, uh, hang on. Okay. okay, wait a minute. What? I'm pretty sure that next week is will technically be the last. No. No. no we're at nine. We have two more. Right. Would we have, have been the more. last one. No. no. No, because this is nine. This is nine. We have two more. Right. No, no, you're right. Ten, eleven. Yeah. I think 12. the twelfth one. More. I think the twelfth one is technically being replaced. Hold on, I got the last one. Yeah. The twelfth one is being replaced. So then. thicker and water was today. T episode ten is the one. We episode don't... eleven is entertainment. Right. And then episode twelve is what we're replacing. Let's, we'll let's replace just 12. get rid of twelve. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do that. We'll do that. And I'm pretty sure thirteen. If we were to do thirteen, that is, we are gone. Yeah, we're out of okay. town. That I think we're right, traveling, so, so. So okay, that's good. Yeah, so we'll just replace number twelve okay. and put that one in its place. Okay, all right. Let's. Are you guys okay over there? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I had a title for that. I had a title for that. What was it called? You for your on new Twitter. one. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. I didn't put it on Twitter. I sent it to David, didn't I? You yeah. did put it on Twitter. Did you I? put it on yeah, Twitter? Yeah, you did. You announced it. Brother Jeff is sad. He said, "Well, what about the bonus episode?" <laughs> That is, that, that is the bonus. We have put in the bonus. bonus. Hey, listen, these are three hours long. How yeah. much more of a bonus yeah, do you want? Exactly. <laughs> you just need to move here. You don't get enough of this. <laughs> say, go back and rewatch. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I said, but. We're getting burnt out over here. Just joking. We're just going <laughs> to yeah. shut her down. All right. Shut her uh, down. Yeah, so don't forget to like and subscribe if you join us today on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great night. We're going to finish up with the committed quartet singing. The Prodigal Son. We'll see you all next week.